Hi everyone, you may have seen on the news about a month ago, around the beginning of April, uh, there were lots of news articles talking about this digital reconstruction of the face of a Mycenaean woman from 3,500 years ago. And the reason why this was so surprising is because she looked nothing like uh, what most people would normally imagine an ancient Greek woman to look like, or even a modern Greek woman for that matter. She looked basically Scandinavian. As you can see in the image here, she's very fair in all aspects. She has blue eyes, she has fair skin, she has fair hair, actually almost reddish gingery hair. So she looks more Scandinavian than Greek. So when this was, uh, when this was released, when this digital reconstruction was uh, presented online and all these news articles were talking about it, there was all this talk about how this gives new insight into the past. But is that really the case? Well, there are actually a lot of problems with this reconstruction, and no, this doesn't give us any new insights into the past. So let's break down how this digital reconstruction uh, actually was created. So put simply, this is a digital reconstruction, a digital rendering of a clay model, or based directly on a clay model, that was created based on the skull of a woman uh, whose skull was found a few decades ago. And the, the clay reconstruction was actually created in the 80s. So her, her facial reconstruction isn't actually anything new. It's been around for a very long time. But this is apparently the first time that someone has actually created uh, a lifelike colored image of it using uh, digital art. So what's the problem with this? Well, the fundamental problem in terms of uh, new insights into how they looked, how the ancient Greeks looked, in terms of colouring, is that there's no colouring on the clay model, the clay model, obviously, it's a clay model, it's, it's grey, so where did the colours for this digital reconstruction come from? Well, the digital artist who created this, he chose the colours to use based on some frescoes from Santorini. In particular, the inspiration for the, the colours used in this digital reconstruction was a particular fresco found on Santorini which showed a woman with a fair skin, blue eyes and reddish gingery hair. But that all begs the question, well, one, why was a fresco from Santorini used, from the Minoan culture, when there are plenty of frescoes available from Mycenaean Greece, where this woman was actually from. So why use something from Minoan Santorini instead of Mycenaean Greece, when the woman is supposed to be a Mycenaean Greek woman? And even if you were to use the frescoes from Santorini, most of them do not show women with blue eyes and ginger hair. Most of the women presented in the uh, Santorini frescoes look basically the same as the ones from Mycenaean Greece. They look, well, they do have pale skin, but they have brown eyes and dark, even black hair. So why would this digital artist, why did this digital, this digital artist use a very rare instance of uh, pale or blue eyes and ginger hair when that's not the common appearance of the people from the culture that this woman was from. It doesn't make any sense. It was clearly a, con a conscious decision, but why that decision was made, I have absolutely no idea. If you want to present uh, a, a likely representation of what this woman looked like, then you wouldn't choose some rare example uh, of some uncommon feature in that culture. That doesn't make any sense. So I've presented here an AI image that I created, which is a far more plausible representation of the coloring of a Mycenaean woman in terms of her hair and her, her eye color. The pale skin though, that's accurate in both the digital reconstruction and my version. Another interesting feature with this digital reconstruction is the hair, because as we can see, she has, it looks basically like modern hair, a very simple modern kind of hairstyle, 
which is unusual because the clay reconstruction that this is a digital representation of actually gave her authentic, accurate Mycenaean style hair. So it doesn't make any sense why this digital artist would have intentionally changed the hair to be modern instead of being accurate Mycenaean hair. Again, another conscious decision which doesn't make any sense uh, in the context of someone trying to accurately replicate the past. And then we have a problem with the actual clay model that was used as the basis for this digital reconstruction. The skull that the clay model was based on actually has the entire center of the face completely missing. There's a gaping chasm there. So how exactly this was used to create an accurate reconstruction of her face is again a mystery. And it's not just me saying this. Experts in the field have pointed out how bizarre it is to, uh, to reconstruct someone's face when basically all the facial bones are missing and doing that without even addressing how those uh, issues were dealt with in the paper that describes the, these facial reconstructions, these clay models. They don't explain how they overcame the challenge of reconstructing the face when basically all the facial bones were missing. So that's a pretty serious issue with the clay model itself and as we've seen the digital reconstruction based on that clay model is also severely flawed because the, uh, the colouring of the hair and the eyes were based on an extremely rare example from a fresco that wasn't even from Mycenaean Greece. So is this an accurate representation of the past? Well, almost certainly not. Does this give us new insights into the past, into what the Mycenaean Greeks looked like? No. This doesn't give us new insights. This was based on pre-existing insights, although, as I've just explained, it wasn't based on pre-existing knowledge very well. It completely disregards the vast majority of what we know about the Mycenaean Greeks in terms of their hair colour, their eye colour and their hairstyle. So, is this a valuable digital reconstruction of the face of this woman from, from 3,500 years ago? Well, I would say no. The AI reconstruction that I've presented here uh, is not based specifically on this woman, but it is a much, much more realistic, much more accurate representation of what a Mycenaean woman would have actually looked like.